Hello, hello, Floss Tube Land. Welcome to another stitch with me. I'm Jade, 310 Stitcher, and I um, thought I would take you along with me. I have a new start today. This is going to be, uh, or this is the Polar Bear and Cup. And let me, I'll put this down for a second, and let me show you what that is going to look like. Let's see here. Boop, boop. Sorry for the shaking. There we go. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. I love these colors. And um, it's just so cute. So this is a pattern that is in my Etsy shop, uh, Smoke and Ash Designs. Um, and really, I just, I, I, created a pattern from this image uh, for myself because I absolutely adore the image. It is AI, um, so of course you have to be okay with that. But look at, look at this color palette. Mm. Just love all these colors um i am still so i kitted this project yesterday and i am still um missing a few colors and i need to fix something because it's gonna really bother me uh, just have to fix the corner here so yeah so i kitted this project yesterday um, I have 28 count fabric from China and I'm using CXC threads per usual. Actually, I do have some, C some, uh, DMC in there as well. Let's see if that's going to hold. That's not going to hold. I need a stronger one. Um, yeah, I do have some DMC in there as well. Uh, but mostly it's CXC. Okay, so I, I have a, yet another setup today and I'm gonna really hope that I don't jostle you guys too much. Okay, let's see. I think you can still see. I think you've also got some shadows in there. But let's see here if that helps. Yes, that helps. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so I'm doing 28 count. Twenty-eight count um even weave. And this even weave from China. I actually quite like it. I don't know if you can tell uh, or if you can see from the camera what the um, how the holes look. But they're quite wide open so it's quite easy to see. I don't even need my magnifier. So my regular glasses are okay. Which is cool. I hate having to be stuck to only stitching something when I have my magnifier. And one, two, three. One, two, three. And one down. So as you can see, I'm going to be stitching this um, two over one half cross. Now the two strands might be, might be a little too thick. So I reserve the right to switch it to one strand at some point. Although if I switch it to one strand, I'll probably go to full cross. 
but we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully I don't have to. Of course, you know, you should do, they say, whoever they are, um, that you should do a swatch. Some test, test stitching. Um, in advance with the different uh, styles, one over one, half cross, one over one, full cross, or uh, two over one, half cross and full cross, just to see what you like. And I am a little too lazy for that. I have done, I do have projects already on 28 count and they, uh, I had started, so that was my honeymoon sunset. If you've watched any of my Floss 2 videos, you'll, you'll um, be aware of that one. And I found that one, two, three, four. Um, I found that the two over one half cross on that project was just too much. It was so thick. I couldn't get the needle through um, because of all the confetti. So I don't know how much confetti this project is going to have. We'll, we'll have to see as we go. But if it does turn out to have a ton, then I, like I said, I'll switch to, to one over one full cross. Skip one, yeah, okay. A new start is always exciting, isn't it? I love it. So I had two starts to do this this uh, fortnight. One is this Polar Bear Mama and Cub, and the other one was the Sorceress by uh, Joan Elliott. And I already started that one. Put quite a few stitches in that, which I was excited about. And I will I'll show that off in my next floss two video. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so like I said, this is a this is yet another new setup. I keep trying different things to see what will work better. One, two, three, four. Um because so far I have not found the ideal uh, setup for me. One, two, three. I haven't found the ideal setup for me. Um, and I, I don't like when I keep jostling the stand and then the camera. Uh, I don't wanna make you guys sick, but also I need to be able to have access to the to the stitching um, reasonably well so that I can stitch properly. Two, three, four. So I haven't quite found the perfect solution yet. I don't think this is going to be a permanent solution either because the camera is a little precariously perched. I'm just gonna mark off what I've done here. The camera is a little bit precariously perched and um, if I jostle the stand at all you guys might actually go flying. So I apologize. I hope I don't make anybody sick. But also I need to adjust this because I'm kind of working a bit sideways. Let's see here. Okay. It's a little better. Maybe I'll just shift my shift my gift. Okay. So um one, two, three. Okay. So uh like I said, this pattern is in my 
is in my Etsy shop if you are interested. Um, and I just, the only reason I'm saying it again is because I wanted to just mention that the pattern, um, the patterns are compatible with both Pattern Keeper and Markup RxP. I have uh, Markup RxP um, and I've loaded it on there, no problem. Uh, the actual uh, software that I use creates a pattern specifically for Pattern Keeper. And so that one should be no problem as well. And I've been told that other patterns have loaded uh, perfectly into Pattern Keeper as well. Eight and four. So as you can see, I'm working on this um, starting cross country or starting, yeah, just with one color. And that is how I like to stitch is just doing, I like to do one, um, one color. I like to use the entire strand before I move to something else. The next one, uh, the next color won't necessarily be the same color. It probably won't in this case. Um, but I don't like, how, you know, if I only worked on it block by block, then I would have already had to park the thread, which I don't like to do. Um, I made a mistake there. Uh, or cut it and then start something else, and then I'd have to put the put the leftover back on the uh, floss keeper. And I don't really want to do that either, so I'd rather just finish the thread before I move on to something else. So how are you guys doing? I hope you, you've been enjoying the summer. Um, we have received, um, we received some awesome weather this week. Um, and this for at least the next week is supposed to be, the next week is supposed to be awesome weather. Um, so I'm really happy about that. had some wet weather for a bit so it's nice to get back to sun and 26 degrees um, it is starting to get cooler in the evenings but not too cool it's still around 13 degrees Celsius um, but it's kind of humid so it feels warmer than that I like when it's a bit cooler in the evenings uh, because it's easier to sleep. One, two, three, and four. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I like it when it's, when you're snuggly in bed and you can, uh, you know, and you've, there's a, there's some cool air around you. And five, three, four, five. So these pages are not unlike the hay, the size of the hay pages, three, four. Um, so it's 70 across, as you can see here. And I'll check how long it is, because I think a hay page goes 90, about 90 stitches. Um, let me just check that. Yeah, it's about 95 stitches down. So very, very similar to the size of the Hade Heaven and Earth Designs page. And I'm just gonna reach over for some water. It 
had an important presentation at work today and uh, it went well, but it's just a lot of, a lot of talking. So my throat is, my throat's dry and now I'm talking again. So I had a headache today and I have a feeling because, so I get to work. I didn't, Okay, so this morning I, I left home early because the traffic has been unbearable this week and uh, for the first time all summer. And the biggest reason for that is that the Canadian federal government has mandated all its employees to go back to the office. Much to the dismay of said employees. Um, so they're not happy, but anyways, there is a lot of, there are a lot of cars on the road and to go two kilometers, the final two kilometers to my office took me half, over half an hour. And I only live 20 minutes from, 20 minutes from the office. Um, Anyways, so I left early because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take me. I had heard rumors that uh, traffic has been bad. So I didn't even, um, I didn't even stop to make myself a coffee either at home or, or on the road. Um, because, yeah, I just wanted to get out. I just wanted to get out the door. One, two, three, four. And um, so I had a headache. And I have a feeling that that headache is caused by dependence on caffeine in the morning. That tends to be, coffee tends to be the first thing I put in my stomach in the morning. And yeah, I know that's not the best thing to do. But I, I love coffee. I love the smell of it. I love the taste of it. Anyways, because I didn't have one, I had a massive headache. And then I get to my office or the office and checked in my bag and I didn't even, I didn't have any meds to deal with it. And so I was just praying because I had this, I had this presentation to do and I, it was an important presentation. I had to be on my best, at my best. And I so did not want this headache to turn into a migraine. Luckily it did not. So I managed to do my presentation and then uh, and then had a coffee afterwards with an extra shot of espresso just to clear the rest of the to clear the rest of the headache so that worked well Are you guys dependent on caffeine in the morning? I used to drink a ton of coffee uh, before COVID, mostly before COVID, I used to drink a few cups of coffee a day. Uh, one sec, one, two, three, four. Um, I used to drink a few cups of coffee a day. Um, at least a couple in the morning and one in the afternoon. So about three cups, sometimes four, depending on, depending on the situation that day. Um, and then when COVID happened, I just stopped. I started just having one cup of coffee a day. And on really tough days, I would have two cups but I have gone down, so not too bad. Okay, I have to pick another color. So 
So unfortunately with, uh, so I think I said I kitted this project up yesterday and I found that I was missing some colors. Oh, including the next one. I actually missed it on, okay. Well, let's go on to the next one. So I have to order those and I'll have to come back to those later, I guess. 3808, it's another shade of green, which I love. So yeah, so what are you guys up to? Are you stitching? What are you stitching on? I thank you so much for those who uh, comment on these videos and let me know what you're stitching on. I And also during my floss through videos, I love that. Um, it, it definitely, you guys are enabling me, <laughs> uh, which is a nice change from me and just enabling you guys. Um, because when you tell me what you're working on, I um, will always go and check out, Google it, check out the pattern. And yeah, my, my wish list has definitely grown as a result. So thank you so much to, um, to all of you who do that. I am a little bit, how do I say this? Um, I don't, I don't like stitching uh, things that necessarily other, so many other people are stitching. I can admire the artwork and I love it. And at some point maybe I will uh, stitch those patterns but it's like I find that when you know a hundred people or two hundred people um, decide a pattern is is awesome and all decide to stitch on it at the same time I I just don't something in me rebels and says nope I don't want to stitch it uh, which sometimes really sucks because I would like to be part of the in crowd. <laughs> um, and I do, like I said, I do usually like, like the artwork. Well, of course I do. Otherwise I wouldn't want to stitch it. Um, but I just don't want to stitch the same thing as everybody else all the time. So my projects, I have a lot of projects that um, many people, most people are not stitching, which is A-OK -okay by me. I like when people stitch different things because I, I, I also like watching people stitch the popular patterns. Uh, don't get me wrong, because like I said, I can, I can admire it uh, from afar. I don't necessarily have to stitch it right then and there but it does give me the opportunity to see what it's going to look like stitched up and then decide for myself whether I'm going to stitch it. Um, hi, monkey. That was Smoke saying hello. Um, but I like stitching things that other people are not stitching also because that way I can show you patterns that may not be so popular um, and, you know, hopefully give them some love that way. Okay, let me just mark this off because I'm already getting confused. One, two, three. So one, two, three. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, so and I have been, I have been told by 
by many of you that you do enjoy my projects um, and in particular the ones that are not so popular. Uh, which is which is great. The reality is there's so many beautiful patterns out there. You just you really can't go wrong. You really can't. And um Yeah. I am learning that I can admire I can admire artwork um and not have to and not have to stitch it and I can I can just watch other people stitch it and sort of live vicariously through them because the reality is um, even with just the projects I have I will probably not live to finish them all so I you know admiring admiring them from from afar is uh, it's a good thing for me So there's a lot of people talking about 2025 plans already. Um, I did a couple plans videos uh, during my last stitch with me. I actually, you guys heard me uh, go on and on. I, well, basically go through the whole decision process, trying to figure out what I was, you know, what I might want to do and and. I'll give the caveat again that I might change my mind, you know, many times between now and the end of the year. I tend to be, I am a bit of a spontaneous um, person in that way. So I may, you know, if something strikes my fancy, uh, I may just end up changing everything on a whim, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But you did, I did go on for an hour about what I might like to do in 2025. And in my last floss tube, I uh, actually had some plans put together a little bit more concretely. Hold on. Okay. Just making sure I didn't miss any. Um, I had plans, um, I had put plans down a little bit more concretely. Um, I created another spreadsheet. I do like spreadsheets. I like, I like numbers and I am a goal oriented person. So I like to set goals. Um, and the difference between setting goals for my crafts, <laughs> um, or my personal, yeah, personal goals, um, personal life goals, as opposed to setting goals for work is that the goals for work are going to be met. I will do my best. Um, and I, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to fail. So they're going to be realistic and they're going to have, they're going to have a measurable, component to them and um, you know I'll be really serious about them whereas my goals for my personal life and definitely my crafting um, aren't always that way because I do want to have fun so So yeah, so even though I set, you know, even though I set myself a particular goal, and sometimes those goals are, um, heavy is not the right word. Let's say that they're challenging goals. They're not super easy to achieve. <laughs> um, with as many projects as I, as I have set goals for, um, but I'm, I take them more lightheartedly. So if I don't, it's just something to strive for. And 
life always happens. So when life happens and I don't meet that goal, I give myself some grace and uh, just move on. How about you guys? Are you guys just spontaneous? Do you count? A lot of people um, count their stitches. Uh, sorry, one second here while I figure out what I'm doing. Um, are you just spontaneous and just pick whatever project you want? Do you let your wheel pick? Do you set goals? Do you do you count your stitches? I do a combination of all of the above. Although this current year, I'm gonna say I have definitely uh, worked mostly on the focus projects um, and trying to meet those goals. I haven't always I have wanted to work on some other projects and in some cases I did manage to in other cases I did not um, which kind of makes me sad so a major way that my goals for next year are going to work is that my the goals that I have set for my focus projects are going to be significantly less stitching than, uh, than they were this year. So that will give me uh, hopefully quite a bit of time to work on just what I want. Which is fantastic. I'm not going to do it if it's not fun. And um, this year is kind of, I kind of surprised myself with um, how well I managed to stick to the goals that I had or to the plan that I had. Um, you know, again, life happened for, so, you know, I didn't always meet my weekly goals and that was okay. But if it starts becoming like a work, like work, then I will lose complete interest. And I don't want to do that. The other reason why my goals for 2025, uh, for the focus whips will definitely be a lot less stitching than uh, than this year. It's because I um, don't currently have a lot of spare time to do my other crafts like knitting and crocheting. And I do have whips, uh, works in progress that are knitting and crocheting that I uh, really would like to work on and get finished uh, so I can start new things. I have quite a few whips, uh, especially in crochet, and I've hardly crocheted this year at all. But I would like to. I'd like to get back to it. I have several blankets that are not going to knit or crochet themselves. Uh, so yeah, so toning down the cross stitching a little bit and hopefully gearing up the knitting and, and uh, crocheting a bit. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm always curious about the way that people, the different ways that people stitch. Um, I 
what do I mean by that? Um, so I don't just mean in terms of, hey, do you do Royal Rose or do you do cross country? Do you do extreme cross country? Do you do diagonal stitching? Um, not just that, but also the way that people stitch in terms of how do you count? How do you actually physically go about doing the stitching? Um, some people double and triple and quadruple count everything, which um, is smart. Definitely, it would reduce the amount of um, frogging and restitching that's required. Um, but it's weird, like I don't, I mean, you guys have heard me counting a little bit when I'm starting in a new square. Just gonna park this down below, or not park it, but end the thread down below. Okay. Um, what was I saying? You guys have heard me counting a little bit in terms of when I start a new square and I need to go like, you know, five across and three up or something. You've heard me do that counting. But I don't do that a lot. Um, I'm just picking another another symbol here so I can get a few different colors in um, I don't I don't do that a lot I tend to do that for the first uh, maybe for the first color but um, actually even with the first color the way that I see things is I see I look within the square and I kind of look at shapes and even when I'm so if I was coming in here and doing something in here I kind of look at the shape that I'm looking for okay there's a line of like five stitches all in a line and I know my next one is the one below or beside it or diagonally the other way um, that's kind of how I that's kind of how I approach stitching. Um, how do you guys do it? And of course, the one that I just picked, I also don't have sugar. Okay, next. Let's see if I have this one. 3847. How do you guys do it? Okay, I do have this one. I'm, I would just be curious. Do you count for every stitch that you're doing? Or do you just count for where you have to count more than three um, to double check where you are? Like I said, I do, I do shapes. Like for this one, for example, I am, what, two, four, six stitches in, but I didn't count six stitches, nor did I count four stitches from the other side. How, what I did was I saw on my pattern that the stitch was above the stitch down here, and I just did it. I don't know, for me that's faster, my brain just works that way. So I'm curious if uh, other people do the same thing or if I'm just thinking thinking weirdly and so here again for example I see that stitch and I know it's the second one over from that stitch I don't know. Everybody does their own thing, which is cool. We always learn something new, right? Which is the best thing. I think it keeps keeps us young and keeps us interested and, and 
helps us do things more efficiently or better or in a more fun in a more fun way find the right hole there for a second. So today is September the 12th. It's a Thursday. My work day is done. And so I wanted to get some stitching in. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get much stitching in this weekend because I am going to be at another uh, psychic fair doing doing tarot and oracle readings again so I'm looking forward to that I really I love tarot um, I love reading tarot I just enjoy it I just enjoy it so much um, and I find it incredibly rewarding to help others in in their journey oops And I did one last weekend, uh, which is why this week I didn't quite get all my all my goals done, nor did I last week. But that's okay. I got my two starts in, so that is absolutely fine. And um, yeah, I just I'm I'm really looking forward to this to this fair. I hope it's really busy um, because I. I would rather do readings than than sit around staring at my phone and not that that happens a lot but some days are a little bit slower so these fairs typically start so hold on one second uh, there's four in between okay one two Okay. Um, these fairs typically start in the afternoon on Fridays. And so the, those days can be a little uh, boring in the in the early afternoon until about until after dinner time, right? Because people are working. And uh, yeah, people are working. So they can be a little bit slow on Friday afternoons, but Saturdays and Sundays are uh, typically awesome, just really fun, really fun days. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's having fun. Uh, people are trying things out for the first time, whether that's a tarot reading or having their aura photographed or... Um, Or having, you know, speaking with a medium or having their palms read or tea leaves read. There's all kinds of, there's all, all kinds of um, things. Or having Reiki done or different healing. There's even hyp healing um, by hypnosis. That is also something that is often offered at these, at these fairs. And of course, there's always lots of bling, um, lots of crystals, and whether that's raw crystals or tumbled stones or um, big spheres or jewel, lots of jewelry with the different types of stones. There's so much to there's so much to look at. Um, so that's why sometimes the you know even the downtimes for us for the vendors are 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 great as well because it gives us a chance to go and uh do a little bit of shopping <laughs> which is always fun okay next color will be 939 and i do have that one So there is one more start that I would like to start soon and it's not, I haven't put it on my, I've not put that on my wheel. Um, I think I'm just going to start it when I'm ready. Um, 
in addition to whatever the wheel picks and that is the my first ever long dog sampler um because I'm excited to see how that one is going to work. Just, I'm excited about the floss that I'm using. I'm using a Silks For You a silk floss in the colorway Mood, which just has these beautiful moody colors. Um, there's some darker, you know, jewel tones as well as um, some bright fluorescent colors and it's just so bright and beautiful and happy and I can't wait to do that I'm pairing that with um, I'm pairing that with a uh, a charcoal gray I think like a $37.99 which I still have to order so that's I have the I have the flo the, fl the mood the so this I have the silk and I have the um, fabric I'm going to use a uh, cream colored fabric from Permin because I want to use what I have and I had thought about doing a gray a light gray but then I wasn't sure if it was gonna to be too much and I don't have a light gray in my stash and I, I don't want to always have to buy new stuff I do want to use what I have who even am I but yeah so I've decided that I'm gonna use what I have um, but I need to buy some more $37.99 I do have a few skeins of it but I don't think it's going to be enough Saga's um, I believe it's Long Dog's largest um, pattern to date and I have no idea how much is going to be required for the for all the arches and whatnot so um, and I don't want to have to worry about um, dye lots so I'm going to purchase a cone of doom of $37.99 um, which even if I don't end up using it all for this project $37.99 is a popular color so I know that I will I know that I'll go through it. So yeah, okay. Let me just see where I am for a second. What did I do? Okay, I did that one, I did that one. One second here. Talking and not paying attention. And then one down here and one here in a V formation. And then one right in the corner. So yeah, so that one will get started uh, this year for sure. Um, and probably as soon as I get my order in, which I haven't even put my order in yet, so probably in the next, I'll put an order in actually, um, in the next day or two. I'm sure this weekend I'll put it in. I went through, so I was kidding up a polar bear, this one this project um, I was kidding up this project and I was running into uh, so I kitted up from my master set uh, which is on floss drops and I noticed that I had a ton of floss drops without any thread on it so I was running low of quite a few colors. Now I do have a few, uh, anyways, I, I had two bins where I put the extras, extra skeins. Um, and so I, I just hadn't 
gone through those extra skeins and put them on the floss straps yet. Uh, so while I was kitting up this project, I also made a list of all of the um, missing flosses on the on my master set as well as missing flosses on on this project um, and then I went through my extra skein boxes I have two of them and I, I found I went through the list and I found all the extra skeins that I actually have in stash so I have all of those now uh, pulled out and I just need to spend the time to put them on my flash straps. I put all the ones that were missing from this project on here that I had in stock. Uh, but like I said, I'm still missing a few. So anyway, I'll have to put that order in because I don't want to get too far ahead on this project without, you know, ha with having missing flosses. I don't know why. I mean, this project is going to take me forever. How big is it? This project is 601 by 398. And it is a, um, the equivalent, I guess, of what a max color would be. I'm just checking if I did what I needed to do. There's a few here. Hold, please. Yes, okay. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, so if I had my, I've talked about this before on my floss, a regular floss tube about how I store my, my master set. I have each one of the um, thousands series. Sorry, I just, apparently I can't talk and multitask. So I have, you know, the zero to a hundred, the one hundreds, the two hundreds, three hundreds, and so on, um, each on a separate, um, on a separate ring. And then all the flosses within that are, um, are on floss straps. And just bear with me for a second. Let's see if I have this color. 890 and I do good it's another green um, yeah and those are all hanging along the uh, my windowsill in my office here um, now I typically will kit up as I showed you all of these you know floss um, things. I have some plastic ones, some cardboard ones. The cardboard ones are not uh, lasting very long. They get they get uh, really messy. So these ones um, they can look they can look messy, but they're they're actually not. If you give them a little shake, um, the flosses all come come out straight again, and they they don't they don't tend to tangle. With the cardboard ones, I find a couple of things. One is that they get really tangled, like really tangled to the point where you have to actually physically separate uh, various threads before you can pull them out of, um, out of where they are, the slot where they are. And, but the second thing, which I find is a bigger, is a bigger issue is that the cardboard, so unlike these ones where the holes, they're, they're not sharp. The edges are not sharp. They're very soft. Can I, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. They're very, they're very rounded. 
um, but with the cardboard ones, the edges are very, are pretty sharp. And they shred the thread where it's looped around the hole. And so I don't like that. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change them now. I'll probably, you know, I'll wait till that project is finished or I'll wait until those cardboard ones get completely mashed and bent and whatever. And I don't like using them anymore. Then I'll replace them with the plastic ones. Um, but given the length of time that these projects take, I really think it's worthwhile using something that is durable and is not going to shred your thread. Um, I don't know how I got on that tangent because I was talking about my, oh yeah, okay. I was talking about how my thread is on floss, my master set thread is on floss drops. Um, and it's all spread out along the windowsill, which is about seven or eight feet long. It's a big window. And it's not, it, that doesn't make it super convenient. I like having the threads there because, you know, on the one hand, um, I can see all the threads and it just, all the, I can see all the colors and I just love the color. I love the colors. It, it, sparks joy in my soul <laughs> to see all of those colors there and it motivates me to to stitch um, so that I can work with those colors uh, but on the other hand it do, it's not very um, easy it's not very quick it makes it it makes stitching a little bit slower if I were to stitch solely from the master set so I do I do stitch from that master set and not from these floss organizers for a few projects. Um, typically not my full coverage because that has way too many colors. Uh, but the smaller projects that are not um, that are not full coverage, I like my flowers of the month. Um, I have been stitching those from the master set and I'll typically just pull because I work with one color at a time. Uh, and what I was doing with that flowers of the month is, um, color completing. So the master set makes it easy. Just grab, you know, a few strands of the one color and, uh, and then just work with that color until it's done. So I can I can work anywhere, right? I don't have to be physically here in my office to work on that. I can work up I can work on my couch or I can work uh, I can you know bring it with me if I'm going somewhere. Um, it makes it easy from that perspective, but it doesn't make it easy if you have if you have a lot of color changes. So I have been toying with the idea of trying um, to get myself set up with, uh, with a system, I don't know, somewhere similar to or in between uh, the, those systems where the, the threads all in a all in a box kind of thing and held on rails. So something like the Pip and Chip or the Annie's, Annie's Keepers, I think. Um, so I was thinking of, I was toying with the idea of that, of trying that. Two, three, four. Um, now it would be my own system. I'm going to come up with something that works for me because uh, I have looked at both the Pip and Chip and the 
um, any skeepers and there are definitely there's some pros and there's also some drawbacks to each so I'm going to um, you know think about what works what would work best for me to help me be a little bit more mobile with my with my stitching uh, if I were stitching from a master set and um, wouldn't require me well wouldn't require some of the stuff that the some of the things that those other systems have or you know sort of takes care of some of the drawbacks of those other systems that's that's probably a better way to say it all right give me a second Let me make sure you guys are still in frame. Yay. Okay, we're just at about an hour. Um, so what else can I say? I've been watching a lot of floss tube. realized so I have a lot of projects right um, and that was a rhetorical question <laughs> I do have a lot of projects I have uh, somewhere north of 50 projects now maybe 55 or 56 um, and I don't mind that number because it's it definitely gives me the variety that I that I long for. There's different types of stitching for different things, right? Uh, so I have some stitching stitching that is totally um, super easy, and I can do. It's kind of mindless. I can do it when I'm watching TV or or talking with people, um, just to keep my hands busy. So that's, you know, that's great. And then I have stitching that is more involved. Um, you know, on the other extreme, I have, I have stitching that is stitching that I can't do when anybody else is in the room because it requires so much concentration. Those ones, I, you know, don't come out as often just because, um, there's a lot of times when I'm just too dang tired from from work or whatever, um, and my brain is tired, and I do, just don't want to put that much effort into stitching at that time. And then I have you know lots of stitching that's in between. Um, so having that many projects gives me the variety that um, I crave, which is awesome. Um, there, I was watching a floss tuber. A new floss tuber. I think she has five or six. I think she has five or six um, episodes now, because the first four were just her whip parade. Sorry, bear with me for one sec here. I feel like I have a mistake here somewhere. Sorry, give me one sec. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? Sorry, I'm just getting confused with where I have done work and where I have not because I didn't go, I didn't go in order. I've been going from left to right, you know, from zero to the 70 and then 70 across. 
and what I did here was I cut over to the to the 50 just because I was right above here and so I was just getting a little bit confused okay and that one is done so let's go back across here anyway yeah so this new floss tuber is Siska Ellen she's known as oh did I you guys still on frame sorry I was moving you guys um, she's known as, uh, I think her, her channel name is, um, sorry, getting confused again. Okay. It came over here. Her channel name is Siska, Ch Siska Stitches. Um, and I, hope I pronounced that right but um, if you like full coverage especially full coverage um, you might want to check out her channel she's got uh, she has over 200 projects many of which are full coverage a good portion I don't think all of them are I could be wrong I did watch her whip parades but I was stitching at the same time so I tend to forget things um, but anyway, she has over 200 and I realized while I was watching her videos that my comfort zone for a number of, st a number of projects, number of works in progress is somewhere short of 200. <laughs> I was getting a little, um, I was getting a little bit antsy, uh, two, four down. Okay. Um, I was getting a little bit antsy watching 200 and just trying to think of how I would manage that and I don't think I could um, nope that's wrong nothing against Siska she you know it works for her and that's that's awesome that's what matters right it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks um, and I have no opinion about her um, having that many projects. Um, I was just thinking about myself. I think whatever makes you happy, you do what makes you happy. And for me, that number of projects would make me, uh, I think would give me anxiety. I don't know. Who knows? Again, I can, I reserve the right to change my mind and um, have lots of projects too. I know that I have been, uh, my, my whip number is not going to stay static. I am doing new starts every two weeks um, and I have a lot of new starts on the wheel planned. So, you know, who knows, maybe I'll end up with uh, something similar um, I'm kind of hoping to cap it at a hundred though. I think I would like to have less than a hundred, less than a hundred whips. So we'll see. But for now, I'm just going to continue, um, doing my new start every two weeks and, uh, you know, keep, keep that going. What did I do? Okay. The issue is I just need to mark off more often because by the time I look from where I am to the side uh, over here where my iPad is with the pattern and then I look back, I get confused and I think I'm in the, in the wrong, I think I'm in a different um, 10 by 10 square. So. Ugh. that's part of my issue with my vision which I won't go into but if you've watched um, if you watch previous videos I have talked about my vision and my brain 
and how sometimes they don't coordinate well. So often I think I have made mistakes when I actually haven't. I'm just looking in the wrong spot. Um, yeah, so in terms of projects coming up, I am letting, as you know, that was a mistake. Let's pull that out. No, dang it. do I do that? I always think I can just back it out and then this happens and it gets stuck. And you know what? I'm going to leave it. One stitch isn't going to matter and I can, um, I can just stitch over it with the right color when I get to that, when I get to that color. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, new starts. So I am letting the, the wheel pick my new starts every two weeks. Um, and you know, on my, on my, the projects I put on my wheel are all the projects that are most, the, the vast majority of the projects that I have already kitted up um, or that I have patterns for even if I haven't kitted them up. Um, oh gosh, see, this is, this is the problem. Am I gonna do it again? Are we gonna try it? Sorry. Oh my goodness. So yeah, um, so I have in my, in my wheel on my phone, um, I have projects that I have kitted up already with fabric and floss. I have projects that I have just the patterns for. Uh, and I have even a couple of projects that I don't even have the, um, the patterns for yet and it's interesting because there's some projects I haven't really been disappointed yet in terms of what it what the wheel picked um, but there are a few projects that I'm dying to start um, but I'm not going to start them until the wheel, wheel picks them so who knows that might be six months from now but I'm dying to start them and I just, I'm having a hard time. I am having a hard time waiting for the wheel to pick them. So at some point right now I'm being patient, but at some point I might change my mind. <laughs> All right, gotta pick another color. Let's see here. I don't have that color. Uh, what else do I have that one? Three, three, six. I think I looked already and I think I don't have that color. Nope. Okay. So how about... Five hundred. Do I have... Five hundred. Yes, I do. And guess what? It's another shade of green. Do you guys have a maximum number of projects? Like, what is your 
what's your comfort zone? I guess is, is really the question. What is your comfort zone with number of whips? Are you a monogamous stitcher? Do you um, like only a couple of projects? Do you, do you care at all? How many projects? Because really it doesn't matter, right? I, there's no judgment. Trust me, there's no judgment on my side. Um, I am... I, I just like to know what people are doing. I'm just curious. What am I doing? I just like knowing what other people, you know, what, what are other people doing? I like um, hearing about what others are doing because, you know, it gives, well, excuse me, it gives us ideas, right? It gives me ideas for maybe what I might like to do going forward. One, two. Okay, and my vision is uh, starting to really really screw up on me here, or should I say my eye brain coordination? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this thread and then I will end the video here. Because otherwise I'm just gonna end up keeping keeping on frogging things. Which is no good for anybody. Now it could, something uh, contributing to it might also be because I'm not using my magnifier even though I don't feel like I need it but maybe my eyes are just straining a little bit more than the a um, little bit more for a longer period of time I guess um, extra four up Who knows, whatever the reason is. It's so annoying. And you'll notice I've, I've changed up what I'm doing <laughs> from going from left to right and right to left to, to traveling down um, for no particular reason other than I didn't want to travel a long way across. No big deal. I am going to make my way back up there shortly. So yeah. Floss tube, like I said, been watching a ton. Um, I will link, link uh, Siska Ellen's or Siska Stitches um, Floss Tube channel um, and I have been watching a bunch of new channels as well two, three, four but I didn't write them down I didn't write them down and of course I don't remember what they are so I'll have to um I'll have to go through my watch history and I'll talk about them next time. Or my floss tube. So 
while I am, uh, I'm close to finish here, but I just wanted to say, um, thank you so much to everyone. I, it, it really warms my heart, um, to see how much you all enjoy my videos, both the regular floss tube and the stitch with me's. Um, I really appreciate your uh, kind words, your likes, and your subscribes. It, it's been, and and just your comments. Like I, I really have enjoyed um, this community that we've created. I don't have anyone um, in my real life that cross stitches. Okay, I need to count again. Four up, five in. I don't have anyone in my real life that um, that cross stitches so that is you know kind of sucks right we like to talk about the things and about the things that we enjoy and um, yeah the things that bring us joy and that make us smile and make us feel creative and motivate us and um, I do have that with knitting which is great to four. No. Hold on a second. One, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. Um, I do ha have that with, with, uh, knitting and, um, also with crochet, which is awesome. But not with a cross stitch. So I really, I really appreciate, um, all of your friendship and the um, all the camaraderie that's come here. Everyone has been so very kind. Um, I have gotten a couple of trolls. One, two, three, four, five. But luckily, not not um, not many, which is good. And I just uh, I don't even let them bother me. I just block, delete, block. Um, because who knows, they're probably, they were probably not even stitchers themselves. I, well, I think in one case, at least for sure. But anyway, um, like I said, for the, the, the vast, you know, 99.9% .9 of you have been, have been absolutely amazing and just so very kind and generous. And I, I just want to say how much I really appreciate it. And I, I'm really happy, uh, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm really happy that I can produce some content that you guys enjoy as well. Um, by the way, if there, and I do take your, your, um, comments you know, to heart or into, into consideration. Like for example, with the last stitch with me, I just wanted to try something different, um, you know, to, with the camera. So, uh, that, you know, I'm not, I think most people said, some people said they didn't care because they're, they're stitching and mostly just listening to me as opposed to watching. So it didn't matter. Um, and a lot of people said, no, they, they actually do prefer seeing the stitching like this. Um, and for my part, um, I didn't like the end. I, I wasn't crazy about the end results either. And I didn't hate it, but I, but I also wasn't crazy about it because, um, what you, I was stitching while I was talking, talking with you and, um, and, um, you know, you saw the most of what you saw the majority of what you saw was my head and the top of my head. So that wasn't, that's not so great. One, two, three, nobody needs to see that. So we are back to this. I'm not going to change it from this. So three in between one, two, three.
So this is what we're going to do. And I will find, I promise that I will find a setup that works um, for these things and doesn't jostle you. If you guys have ideas, by all means, please let me know. Um, I haven't quite figured all the technology out yet. Um, today I'm trying a different stand uh, to see if I could get the camera closer and I did. I was able to get the camera closer which is hopefully hopefully good for you guys. Um, but it's still in a play it's still yeah it's still in a place where I'm I'm jostling it a bit and so I don't know you guys let me know does it bother you? Um, does the jostling bother you? Has it, how has it been in this video? Um, give me some feedback, please. So four and four. One, two, three, four, two, three, four. Um, yeah, give me some feedback. Let me know if this level of jostling is, is okay or if it's bothersome. Um, I am going to try to do something different, but uh, I guess in a pinch I could always revert to this if it's, if it becomes a big issue. One, two, three. The other thing um, I would love your, your feedback on is on the floss tubes, on my floss tubes, um, does it bother you guys that I don't do before and after pictures? Um, I haven't done them for a couple of reasons. One is uh, I, it takes a lot of time and sometimes a lot longer than I have available. Um, to to edit um, and it's a lot of effort and I I've got many dozens of thousands of photos on my on my phone and adding adding more and keeping them I'm just I'm not good at keeping track of what's what two three four because oh five two three four because I have to take pictures or I take pictures, you know, to post on social media. Um, and I take pictures for some stitchy games. Um, and so then I get confused about which photos were taken to be as a before picture. One, two, three, four. Um, and which pictures are just were just for, for posting. Uh, so they would be updates to three. So I get confused. My brain is, you know, not, like I said, it, it sometimes doesn't work optimally. Um, so that's why I haven't done them. And I don't think it bothers people too much, but let me know what your preference is to three, four, five. Oops. And also it would make my videos even longer than they are. And my videos are pretty long as it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I don't worry about that piece so much because I know that people can always can always watch them in a couple of different segments or you can watch them on high speed. Um, so that's okay. So we are done. I'm going to put this away because uh, like I said, my eye brain coordination is no longer uh, functioning at its best capacity. Um, we've gotten a pretty good pretty good start on this. I've put in 362 stitches in the past hour and 20 minutes, which is pretty good. I don't, I don't mind that at all. Um, and I'm at 0.15% completed. 
Um, yeah, so 362 stitches out of 239,198 stitches. So it's not a massive project by any means. I have many projects that are much bigger than this. Um, so it's definitely one of the smaller full coverage that I have, uh, but I like it. I like it a lot. Um, anyway, let me know how many stitches, uh, well, what you were working on, how many stitches you did, whether you were doing full confetti or, or um, doing full cross or half cross or what you were working on. Like I said, I really, I enjoy knowing what you guys are working on because I like to be enabled as well. Um, but anyway, um, I will see you next week for a regular floss tube video, I think. I'm not sure when this is going up. Uh, hopefully it's going up tonight. Um, my last video took three days to upload for some reason. Um, so hopefully this one doesn't take as long. And if it uploads tonight, then great. Otherwise it'll have to wait until uh, Sunday or Monday. And then my floss tube would be the following week. But anyways, we'll see. So until the next time, thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you later. Work, be, be kind. <laughs>